Welcome to the complete story of Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. A tale of identity, purpose, loss, and atonement. Not to mention quite a bit of over-the-top plot points that might even make the more modest parts of Kingdom Hearts blush. Originally released for the PlayStation 2, Dirge of Cerberus is a third-person shooter extravaganza, featuring Final Fantasy VII fan favorite Vincent Valentine. But unlike Crisis Core, which has been remastered for modern hardware, Dirge of Cerberus sadly still remains unavailable, unless you happen to have a PlayStation 2 lying around. But don't worry, we are here to help keep you in the loop. Whether you're here to prepare for what's to come in the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy, or you just want to relive the game. But anyway, I'm Peter from Birds of Play, and I hope you'll join us as we revisit the complete story of Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. It's going to take a while to get to the bottom of this intricate tale of redemption, but I hope you'll stay with us every step of the way. That means, please subscribe to the channel, by the way. Okay? Then let's go! In the midst of Meteor Fall, as Meteor, the ultimate destructive magic, threatens to crash into the planet, the spunky ninja girl, Yufi Kisaragi, oversees the evacuation of Midgar, together with Vincent Valentine, a mystical man clad in red, stern and upright, while at the same time dark and mysterious. However, as Yuffie makes her preparations to leave, Vincent asks her to check the Marco Cannon for survivors one more time, the inspection revealing unsuspected life signs. Having his suspicions confirmed, Vincent rushes up the stairs to the top of the cannon, where he encounters what appears to be his old nemesis, Professor Hojo, who Vincent had already killed with the help of his comrades in arms. As Hojo is hunched motionless over the control panel, Vincent takes aim, but before he can fire, the platform is struck by lightning, and when he looks again, the visage of Hojo is nowhere to be seen. The structure starts to crumble, and Vincent is forced to retreat, catching a ride with Yuffie to safety. Meanwhile, the computer at the top of the tower continues to run, the reasons remaining a mystery for now. Three years later, Vincent spends a sleepless night in the town of Calm, where he is haunted by the memory of Lucrezia Crescent, a scientist whom he had been tasked with guarding in the past. He can hear Lucrezia's voice asking him for forgiveness, but he believes that he is the one who should apologize. On the table, Vincent's phone has a message from Reeve to Esti, one of his former comrades in arms, telling him they should meet in calm and the television set plays the last transmission received of an investigation team that went missing in the abandoned ruins of Midgar. The team going missing as they discovered a secret location situated underneath the Shinra building, a hidden complex, believed to have been the setting for a host of horrific human experimentations. The sky is lit up by fireworks as the people of Calm put on a joyous festival. But ever the loner Vincent continues to sulk by himself, all alone in his room. Without warning, however, the festivities are suddenly interrupted, as the town is attacked by a mysterious military force, whose uniforms are adorned with neon blue lights. They attack the townspeople, killing some and rounding the others up into containers to be taken away. Gun in hand, Vincent leaps into action, taking down one of the hovercrafts, before turning his gaze to the rest of the invading force. As Vincent looks around, he is spotted by some of the soldiers, the visual information from their visors being processed by a mysterious young girl wearing a headset in a secret location, who exclaims that she has found him. Vincent then goes in search of Reeve, taking on the enemy forces by his lonesome. All the while, the girl keeps tracking his whereabouts. Vincent is ambushed by the girl and a big, bluish brute, 
as they come crashing through a wall. The girl asking him about the location of what she calls the Proto-Materia, although Vincent doesn't seem to have a clue as to what she's talking about. The Brute offers a salute, announcing Hail Weiss, and the infantrymen join him in the chant before attacking Vincent. Vincent makes short work of them, but as the Brute steps up to take care of him himself, the girl faints, forcing the Brute to retreat, telling Vincent the luck is on his side. As he carries the girl away, the Brute introduces himself as Azul, and tells Vincent that they will meet again. Afterwards, Reeve rushes into the room, and the two old friends exchange greetings. Reeve asks Vincent who those soldiers were, and upon hearing the name Azul, he recognizes it as that of Azul the Cerulean of the Tsvietz, although he doesn't comment on it further at this stage. Reeve asks Vincent to lend the WRO, or World Regenesis Organization, a hand, but Vincent claims he wants no part of it. As Reeve tries to convince him to join their cause, an enemy soldier breaks into the room and shoots Reeve in the back. Thankfully, however, the Reeve in question was but a puppet, and as Vincent goes to check on him, a happy-go-lucky Kate Sith cat puppet jumps out of the remains. Reeve having an uncanny knack for remote puppetry. Reeve thanks Vincent for his concern, and tells him that even though he pretends not to care, he always comes through in the end. Vincent reluctantly agrees to help out, and together with the WRO, an organization dedicated to aiding the healing process of the planet after the Genova War, he drives the invading forces out of calm, gun in hand, and with the power to turn into a monstrous beast. With the enemy retreating, withdrawing their forces from Calm, Reeve tells Vincent, as there are reports, that Edge, a city built to the east of the remains of Midgar, has similarly come under attack. In Edge, WRO troops are already confronting the enemy, but the soldiers keep disappearing as they are engulfed by a mysterious darkness. As the remaining WRO troops are cornered, a woman in red reveals herself introducing herself as Rosso the Crimson, another member of the Tsvietz. On sheathing her weapon, Rosso brings the WRO soldiers low with one fell swoop of her double blade, saying that the mighty WRO would not last a day in deep ground. On the way to Edge, riding in an all-terrain truck called the Shadow Fox, Reeve explains what they are up against. He tells Vincent, that the attackers belong to Deep Ground, the shadow of the Shinra Company that was constructed under orders from the former president and completely hidden from the rest of the world. Created to be an army of superhuman warriors, unfettered by questions of morality. Furthermore, he tells them that the man they met earlier, Azul, is also a member of Deep Ground, but that he belongs to an elite unit known as the Tsvietz. However, Due to the secret nature of Deep Ground, even Reeve has limited intel about them, despite having been a high-ranking Shinra official in the past. The only people in the know were the former president, Heidegger, Scarlet, and the head of biochemical research, Professor Hojo. Reeve doubts that even Rufus, the president's son and successor, was ever briefed on the project. Such was the nature of its secrecy. Reeve then asks Vincent whether he has heard of the mass disappearance that recently occurred in Junon, and Vincent replies that he heard that about 20 or 30 people suddenly vanished. However, Reeve tells him that the report was fabricated to conceal the truth to avoid a panic, revealing to Vincent that the actual number of people that went missing that day was 1,200. He tells him that since the Junon disappearances, the people in Edge have been on Edge, reporting screams coming from the direction of Midgar, night after night, the sound of a thousand wailing souls. Suddenly, their talk is interrupted by a rogue transmission that is broadcast on all wavelengths, featuring a muscular man 
with a majestic mane of silver hair, telling those watching that the time has finally come to cleanse the world, only sparing the pure for the cause, while the tainted will be hunted down and exterminated. The man is Vice the Immaculate, the leader of Deep Ground, and his message is followed by a maniacal laughter as he revels in the notion of the coming destruction. Unable to trace the signal, the truck is then attacked by guard hounds, forcing Vincent to take care of their pet problem at full speed. They manage to escape their dogging pursuit, but end up crashing the truck in the process. Reeve asks Vincent to continue on to Edge by himself, as he is troubled by the transmission they just saw. He needs Vincent to join up with the WRO squad already deployed in Edge to help them liberate the city. In Edge, Rosso repeats the message of doom, praising Wise for his riveting choice of words as she relaxes among a fresh pile of corpses. As Vincent arrives in the pouring rain, he encounters a one-eyed woman in a lab coat, the two of them holding each other at gunpoint, before recognizing that they are in fact allies. Vincent tells the woman that Reeve sent him to help the WRO, and as she lowers her weapon, she introduces herself as Shalua Rui, telling him that Reeve has told her much about him. As she leaves, Shalua tells Vincent she has business to attend to, cryptically telling him that she is searching for her reason to live. As Vincent tries to get to the bottom of the mysterious disappearances in Edge, he comes across a fatally wounded soldier, who tells him they were ambushed by a soldier in red, his entire squad having been wiped out. Before dying of his wounds, the soldier points him to a warehouse on the edge of town, where Deep Ground was gathering civilians. On the way to the warehouse, Vincent saves a child from Deep Ground soldiers, the child in turn guiding him to the warehouse by helping him acquire the necessary card key to pass the gate blocking his way. Before saying goodbye, however, the child bursts into tears. Having been unable to avenge his family, he asks Vincent to help him avenge their death. Having received the message, Vincent moves on without a word. Reaching the warehouse, Vincent finally comes face to face with Rosso, as she stands alone in the rain, telling him that this is the first time she's ever felt the rain on her skin, which is understandable considering she hadn't even seen the sky until a few days ago when Deep Ground was unleashed on the world. As she bids him welcome, she calls him the Keeper of the Proto Materia, although Vincent still doesn't seem to know what that is. She tells him that the Proto Materia is the key to controlling Omega and that they know he has it. When Vincent fails to comply with her wishes, Rosso attacks him and pushes him to the edge, forcing him to transform into Chaos, a powerful monster residing within him. Chaos drives Rosso away, but leaves Vincent too weak to stand, leading him to collapse and lose consciousness. While knocked out, he is reminded of Lucrezia, and the time he was shot by Professor Hojo, when he confronted him about his experiments involving her. Remembering that as he bled out on the floor, Hojo talked about using his body for his next experiment. Vincent then remembers being brought back from death's embrace, the first thing he saw being Lucrezia standing outside his regenerative chamber, monitoring him. When Vincent wakes up, he has once again been placed in a regenerative vat, but this time it is Shalua who is standing watch over him. She tells him that he is safe inside the WRO headquarters and that she carried him back here from Edge after he collapsed during his fight with Deep Ground. She tells him that the beast inside him went a little wild and Vincent asks her whether she means chaos. Upon hearing this, Shalua is shocked to hear that his body harbors the chaos gene although she figures that it does explain his relationship with Dr. Lucrezia Crescent, and asks whether he was one of her experiments. Vincent seems surprised by the suggestion, 
and asks whether Lucrezia was researching chaos. To answer his question, Shalua pulls up Lucrezia's profile on the computer, explaining her status as a scientist specializing in biotechnology. In her research thesis, The Planet's Pulse, Lucrezia referred to chaos as one of the sentient xenoforms residing among them, although her theories ended up being too abstract and complex to gain any real footing. Elsewhere, Azul and the little girl continue to keep an eye on Vincent, a young girl telling him that Vincent is located in the WRO headquarters. Upon hearing this, Azul becomes pleased, since it allows him to hit two birds with one stone. Claiming the proto-materia, as well as burning the WRO to the ground. Back at the headquarters, Reeve debriefs Vincent, paying special attention to how Rosso claimed that the protomateria was the key to controlling Omega, even though he doesn't understand the true significance of those words. Shalua chimes in with a passage from Lucrezia's thesis, which describes Chaos as the squire which will guide Omega to the lofty heavens. She can't say for sure what it means, since the thesis she read was but a fragment, but everything that's happening seems to be connected with Lucrezio's work in some way. Shalua believes they must gather more data on her to get to the bottom of it, but before they can proceed with their investigation, the headquarters are attacked by Deep Ground, Azul leading the charge. As Shalua surveys the security cameras, she notices a person of interest and rushes out. Hurrying to Vincent's side, she spots the young girl from Deep Ground, stealthily trailing him and forces her to reveal herself. Shalua recognizes the girl as Shelk, although Shelk doesn't recognize her in turn. Shalua tells her she's been searching for her for so long but the girl is reluctant to trust her, telling her it doesn't matter who they are, and that her current mission is as a deep ground soldier. Shalua tells her that it does matter, and that even though ten years have passed, she is still her one and only sister. Shelk tells her that for ten years she lived in a hell far deeper than any Shalua could imagine, noting that even though she should be nineteen years old by now, she doesn't look like it, her body now requiring regular doses of Marco to function. However, despite of all of this, Shalak doesn't consider herself the least bit unfortunate, her only regret being to have held on to a foolish thread of hope that someday someone would come rescue her, telling Shalua it is time for them to put the past behind them. Before she can strike her down, Reeve intervenes on Shalua's behalf pointing out the sacrifices she has made to free her sister, her missing eye, her mechanical arm, how she risked her life time and time again fighting Shinra, how more than half of her organs have been reconstructed, resulting in intense chronic pain. Shelk seems affected by this revelation, but as she tries to cut her sister down regardless, Shalua is saved by Reeve and Vincent. Afterwards, Vincent does battle with Shelk, the transparent of the Tzviets, and as he defeats her, knocking her out, Shalua takes her into her arms, their meeting resulting in a bittersweet reunion. With no time to rest, Vincent faces Azul, who asks him the ultimate existential question, why they exist. But once Vincent fails to give him an answer, Azul tells him, he is ignorant to his own destiny, it being up to Azul himself to show Vincent what he really is. As Vincent's bullets fail to penetrate Azul's protective barrier, Vincent and Reeve make a run for it, leading them to a bigger gun, which Vincent uses to once again target Azul. But even though the shot manages to penetrate his barrier, Azul replies in kind reappearing with an even bigger gun, overjoyed by Vincent finally being a worthy opponent. The two of them do glorious battle, but eventually Vincent emerges victorious, Azul 
having been defeated. Having thwarted Deep Ground's assault, Vincent heads for Nibelheim in search for answers at the Shinra Manor, the site of much tragedy for him as well as others. Reeve informs Vincent that they have reports of Deep Ground soldiers in the area, so he suggests that he use the sewer system extending from the old Marker reactor to reach his destination. Meanwhile, Reeve intends to use Kate Sith to infiltrate Deep Ground and find out what they are truly up to. Taking Reeve's suggestion to heart, Vincent braves the sewers. But as he draws closer to the manor, he is reminded of Lucrezia and the days he served as one of the Turks, assigned to her protection. During their first meeting, Lucrezia seemed shocked by his name, Valentine, although she quickly warmed up to him, introducing herself in turn. Meanwhile, Kate Sith infiltrates Deep Ground, where he witnesses a tank of people being plunged down into a pool of Mako, only to be devoured by some gigantic creature. Suddenly he is joined by a mask-clad member of the Sviets, Nero the Sable, who tells him that the creature is the Usher of Souls, Omega. Nero then makes Kate Sith disappear into a cloud of darkness, a single Mughal doll floating atop the Mako, no doubt having once belonged to an innocent child. Back in Nibelheim, Vincent discovers a holographic projection of Lucrezia in the library of the Shinra Manor, who tells him that the awakening of Omega is upon them, reciting a passage from her thesis, Soul wrought of terror corrupt, quelling impurity, purging the stream to back and forth an ultimate fate. Behold, mighty chaos, Omega squire to the lofty heavens. Saying that she came across the passage while studying the scriptures of the ancients, the chronicles of yore, they spoke of Omega, the end, who, like all other sentient beings, is born of the life stream. However, Omega's only purpose is to cleanse the planet of all living things, leading their immortal souls through the abyssal ether to a new beginning far, far beyond the never-ending sea of stars. For just as life circulates through the planet, so too does the life of the planet circulate through the universe. Or at least that's the theory. The only thing Lucrezia is certain of is that if Omega awakens, all life as they know it will end, embarking on a journey to the cosmos as the planet it leaves behind withers and dies. The holograph then tells Vincent that Lucrezia left a copy of her records there for Vincent to find. Although she cannot imagine them being of any help, Lucrezia once again apologizing to Vincent for everything. As Vincent continues his investigation, he is once again confronted by Rosso. He asks her what they intend to do with Omega, but she replies that she doesn't know and doesn't care and that she is simply acting to fulfill Vice's desire, all of Deep Ground acting to make his wishes a reality. As they do battle, Rosso impales Vincent with her hand, tearing a piece of materia out of his chest, at which point chaos re-emerges, but fails to manifest completely. Since Vincent cannot control the beast without the proto-materia, which had been hiding inside himself all along. As Rosso prepares to deal the finishing blow, she is interrupted by Yuffie's shuriken, the ninja girl blinding her as she escapes with Vincent, leaving Rosso enraged, swearing to kill Vincent the next time they meet. Having lost consciousness, Vincent is once again reminded of the time he protested against Lucrezia taking part in one of Hojo's experiments using her own child, the experiment that would result in the birth of Sephiroth. He asks whether Lucrezia is truly okay with this, and she replies that as long as it only concerns her, she is sure. Missing his opportunity to object based on his personal feelings, Vincent stays silent, 
watching as the fate of the woman who was so dear to him was sealed. That was his sin, and this being turned into whatever he is now, is his punishment. As he wakes up, he is greeted by Yuffie, who gives him a grandiose self-introduction before hitting her head. Yuffie tells him to dig it easy, since he has a big hole in his chest. Although the wound already healed itself due to Vincent's inhuman physiology, Yuffie tells him that she is helping Reeve and the WRO out and that she ran into Vincent while poking around Nibelheim, allowing her to save him just in the nick of time. They are then contacted by Reeve, who tells them about what he discovered as Kate Sith amidst the ruins of Midgar, and tells them they cannot allow Deep Ground to sacrifice any more lives to Omega, asking for their cooperation as they launch a full-scale offensive against them. Back at headquarters, Shelk awakens to find her sister Shalua asleep at her desk as she monitors her recovery. Elsewhere in the building, Azul awakens, even though he was presumed dead. As Shalua wakes up from her nap, she asks Shelk how she is feeling, but the younger sister dismissively replies that they were foolish to let their enemy live, saying she will now kill her and return to deep ground. However, Having regained her bearings after the initial shock of being reunited with her long-lost sister, Shalua stands firm and refuses to let her leave. At the same time, Ibgrand once again infiltrates the WRO headquarters and Shalk explains that they are there for Azul, whose death was merely a prologue to the true terror. Luckily for the WRO, Vincent and Yuffie return to headquarters although Yuffie manages to knock her head again as the truck stops, this time knocking herself out. As a result, Vincent goes in alone, making short work of the military units situated outside. Inside, he encounters a gargantuan behemoth, and Shulk explains that the beast is none other than Azul, who attacks the people present indiscriminately, even lashing out at Shulk herself. Shalk pulls out a shield materia to stop him, returning him to his human form to protect herself. But even as Azul regains his humanity, he still lashes out at her, telling her that she is no longer required. He tells her that she is just like the others, and that her weak body is nothing without Marco, her only skill having been to collect data from inside a virtual reality, something that is no longer of use to their cause. He tells her that thinking of her as a fellow member of the Tzviets always made him sick, and that Vice has already ordered her termination. Shalua grabs her sister and runs off with her, unwilling to abandon her to her fate. As a door starts to close on them, Shalua sacrifices her mechanical arm to pry it open, allowing Shelk to escape without her. As Azul approaches, Shalua apologizes for having let Shelk suffer for so long, telling her she loves her before the door closes completely, sealing her in with a murderous Azul. Shelk is shocked by her sister's sacrifice, not understanding why she would go to those lengths to protect her. With the headquarters in disarray in the aftermath of the attack, Reeve becomes discouraged that he wasn't able to live up to being a so-called hero of the Genova War. But Vincent encourages him, telling him that it was him and their other comrades who taught him he had to move ahead, giving Reeve the push he needs to press on. Having awoken from her graceless knockout, Yuffie oversees a comatose Shalua, who, unlike her, won't wake up since she has suffered too much trauma to the head. Yuffie is distraught by Shalua's fate, but Shalk calls her sister a fool for having done what she did. Vincent says that he cannot speak for her sister, but tells her that when people have someone they care about that much, giving their life is sometimes the least they can do. Shalk having been Shalua's reason to live. As Vincent and Shelk come into contact, 
a memory surfaces of a time he shared an afternoon picnic with Lucrezia. The data fragments from Lucrezia, uploaded to Schelke's neural network, seemingly responding to Vincent's presence. Having overcome his moment of self-doubt, Reeve re-emerges and tells Vincent that the Omega report he recovered from Nibelheim was incomplete and that they require the other half to make any sense of it. At this point, Schalk informs them that a large quantity of Lucrezia's mnemonic data fragments were uploaded to her neural network so that she could locate and retrieve the proton materia. She says that if she were to upload the WRO files on the Omega report, combining them with the data she already possesses, she might be able to obtain a clearer picture of what they are up against. Perhaps even allowing herself to begin regaining control of her own mind, which was fragmented by the original data. Suddenly, Yuffie asks Vincent and Reeve to come outside and welcome their friend, Sid Highwind, as he arrives on his airship, the Shira. He brings with him a fleet of other ships, lending his strength to their cause, providing the WRO with mobile headquarters for their assault on deep ground by air. Once aboard the Shira, Shark tries to modify the equipment available so that she can perform an SND, a synaptic net dive, allowing her to interface with the network inside Midgar. Down on the ground below, Vincent's former comrade in arms, Tifa Lockhart and Barrett Wallace, lead the ground assault in a truck, bringing Cloud Strife along for the ride, riding Fenrir, his motorcycle, as they prepare to engage the enemy. Aboard the Shira, Shalk commences a synaptic net dive, providing the people on the deck with a visual representation of Lucrezia's research, showing them how the planet will one day take her final breath, as Omega gathers all life, leading it to the Sea of Stars, where it will embark on a fabulous journey along a road untraveled, leaving the planet an empty shell destined to die silently in the limitless void of space. It tells them that Omega is the same type of life form as the weapons Vincent and his friends encountered three years ago, creatures which the planet gave birth to so that it could protect itself, the birth of Omega now being close at hand. Omega is a safety mechanism designed solely to maintain and protect the flow of life. Normally, Omega would pose no threat to them, as it should only manifest when the planet has detected something that may cause her harm. However, Deep Ground is attempting to awaken the beast early by feeding it their kidnapped victims, slaughtering thousands of innocent souls to create a pure life stream in order to trick the planet into thinking the end is near. Omega is being stirred deep beneath Midgar in Mako Reactor Zero, and all the other reactors have been tied into its mainframe to increase its output. Therefore, in order to slow down the reanimation process, one of the primary objectives of the assault is to destroy Mako Reactors 1 through 8. However, while Cloud and the others take care of the reactors, Vincent's mission is to take care of the Tsuyats, everyone counting on him to see it through. As the WRO approaches deep ground, Rosso, Azul and Nero all stand watch outside, fully prepared to take them on, and with Omega's awakening near at hand, they are determined to let this be the end. Before Vincent and the others head out, Schalk hands Vincent his phone, telling him she took it from him back and calm. Schalk explains she has modified it slightly, allowing him to contact her personal terminal directly so that she can assist him on his mission, guiding him into deep ground. In addition to helping Vincent, Reeve then asks Schalk to keep an eye on the airship while they are away, officially recruiting her to aid the WRO. As they launch a full attack on the ruins of Midgar, Deep Ground emerges from the rubble to meet them head-on as they approach by both land and air, 
Cloud leads the charge by land, swiftly penetrating the enemy ranks. But Rosso charges out to intercept him, the two of them doing battle as Azul gleefully shoots down airships out of the sky with his gigantic hand cannon. Meanwhile, riding down on a hoverboard along with the WRO as they descend upon their target, Vincent breaks away from the battlefield to pursue his own mission. Assisting some WRO troops on the way to his destination, Vincent insists on going the rest of the way alone, not willing to let any of the troops die, since Sid had ordered them to stay alive. Once he's by himself, Vincent encounters Rosso, who plans to make sure he won't return from the dead this time, threatening to slice him into pieces. However, it is Vincent who emerges victorious, forcing her to recognize his strength. Rosso takes her leave, but tells him that the mighty Azul awaits. Rosso then breaks off a piece of the building, plummeting to the deadly depths below, professing that no one will stand above Rosso the Crimson, refusing to grant him the pleasure of killing her. Vincent arrives at the Shinra building, where Shark tells him to look for the former president's personal entrance in order to reach deep ground. Suddenly, Chaos tries to take a hold of him, and Shark explains that the proto-materia Vincent once possessed had been instrumental in helping him control Chaos. With it gone, Vincent must now struggle to control Chaos by himself, the ordeal resulting in his mental state having become extremely unstable. As this is going on, Shalk is taken over by Lucrezia's data fragments and tells Vincent that he must fight the chaos slumbering within him because she doesn't want him to die. Suddenly, the Shira has unexplained engine troubles, so Sid asks Shalk to check out the engine room. Once there, however, she is confronted by Nero of the Tsvietz, who has infiltrated the airship, telling her he was short a few souls, so he came to collect. Nero has taken the entire crew to be sacrificed, the only thing remaining in the engine room being a motionless Kate Sith doll. Not willing to let the others down, Shell takes up arms against Nero, risking her life in the process to protect her newfound friends. Down on the surface, Vincent gets a call from Tifa, with Barrett energetically screaming in the background. Tifa passes the phone to Cloud, who tells Vincent that they have lost contact with Sid's airship. With Shelk missing in action, Tifa sends Vincent a map of the Shinra building, and Cloud tells him not to worry, Vincent in turn telling them to leave Deep Crown to him. Finally reaching the entrance, Vincent is ambushed by Azul, who notes that something inside Vincent wants to break free, the energy from chaos noticeably seeping out. Azul turns into a beast again, bearing his fangs and displaying his true strength, forcing Vincent to manifest chaos from within. However, chaos impales Azul with his own gun, proving chaos to be the bigger beast. Chaos lets out a powerful burst of energy, pushing Azul off a nearby ledge. Azul's last words being, Hail Vice, as he falls to his death. As Vincent is taken over by Chaos, he is reminded of how Lucrezia tried to devise a way to safely let him out of the vat Professor Hojo had placed him in after shooting him. As Hojo arrived on the scene, he was amused that Lucrezia seemed to be putting her Omega and Chaos theories to the test, leaving her to her own devices out of scientific curiosity. Lucrezia all the while protesting the notion that she was experimenting on Vincent, as this was the only way she might save him. Coming to his senses, Vincent finally enters deep ground, Shinra's dark secret, an underground hell infested by monsters. Inside, Vincent gets sucked into Nero's darkness, but Lucrezia guides him back into the light using Shelk as a medium, telling him that he cannot be contained by the darkness, 
because a part of him was born from it, allowing him to find his way back. Still inside the darkness, Schalk remembers Lucrezia with a man as they visited the crystal cave she later made her home after the birth of Sephiroth, the man telling her that this is the grotto where chaos is destined to awaken. Lucrezia called the man Dr. Valentine, and with his help, she sought to further her research. Later, Dr. Valentine saved her from an accident in the lab, but was infected by a mysterious substance in the process. Dr. Valentine then died in her arms, asking her to tell his son sorry before returning to the livestream. Shark tries to comfort Lucrezia, but is confronted by a memory of her own, this time remembering how she had cried at her mother's grave as a child, her sister being the one to comfort her. Shalua appears before Shalk, asking if it's alright for her to return to the planet, but Shalk tells her she can't yet, refusing to let her go, despite having dismissed her before. As Shalk regains her senses, she finds herself crying, the young girl having rediscovered her emotions. Deeper in the complex, Vincent encounters Nero, who can no longer let him run around unchained saying he must protect his beloved brother, Vice, the only person who ever loved him and the only person he will ever love. Vincent asks what he did with Shelk, and Nero replies that she is inside him, lost like a little puppy. Nero and Vincent do battle, and Nero absorbs Vincent into himself. There, Vincent finds Shelk and rescues her, this time pulling her out of the darkness with him, much to Nero's surprise. Recognizing that his darkness has no control over Vincent, the harbinger of chaos, Nero says he must try an alternative approach. However, before they can continue their battle, Yuffie jumps in between them with one of her signature introductions, affording Nero the opportunity to take his leave. Taking the chance to regroup, they find a Mako chamber for Shellac to recover in. While there, Shelk unwittingly shares data with Vincent through a nearby console, reminding him of the time when he discovered that his father, Grimoire Valentine, had been working with Lucrezia before his death. Lucrezia blamed herself for his father's death, even though Vincent never did. Afterwards, she started to distance herself from him, the light leaving her heart, driving her into the arms of Hojo. In the depths of the compound, Vincent and Yuffie discover Vice's lifeless body perched upon a throne, at which point Nero appears, telling him he won't be like that for long, a new life already breathing inside him, just as one does within Vincent himself. Nero explains that his dear brother will soon awaken, it's seeming like an eternity since he was granted the knowledge of how to bring him back. Vincent and Yuffie ask who granted him this knowledge, but without responding, the chamber is flooded with Mako, stirring something within Vice. As they try to interfere with the process, they are stopped by Nero, and Yuffie is dragged into the abyss, Vincent once again using his resistance to the darkness to rescue someone from Nero's grasp. In order to shield Vice from Vincent, Nero resumes his battle with him, this time transporting Vincent into a hellish landscape with mysterious floating platforms floating above a pool of lava where Nero appears in a spider-like machine known as Arachnero. Falling into the lava, Nero eventually transforms into Gorgon Nero, an even more powerful beast, but Vincent nevertheless manages to get the best of him, returning them to reality. Afterwards, a beaten Nero limps over to Vice, just as he is being reborn. Overjoyed, Nero welcomes his brother back to the world of the living, but Vice sneers and tells Nero he has no further use of him, and plunges his hand into Nero's chest, throwing him across the room. As Vice charges Vincent, it becomes obvious that he is impervious to Vincent's attacks, explaining this phenomena 
Vice tells Vincent that his body is one with Omega, just as his is one with Chaos. And as Vice believes Omega to be a vastly superior being to Chaos, he has nothing to fear from him. Vice reveals that he and Vincent have met before, telling him that three years ago, when he was looking for Sephiroth, he took it upon himself to distribute his own data, his mind, his knowledge, his inner being across the worldwide network, so that even though his body would die and the world would be left in ruin, he would survive inside a virtual reality. When the network was restored, the scattered data regrouped and he was reborn in a sort of Neo reunion. The one in control of Vice revealed to be none other than Professor Hojo, back from the dead, his maniacal laughter being unmistakable. Hojo explains that he never believed in Lucrezia's theories, but that when he witnessed Vincent transforming into chaos three years ago, it validated her research. And if Vincent could become Chaos, then perhaps he could become Omega and traverse the cosmos in a blaze of glory. However, since a durable vessel was required to host the power of Omega, he had to make the necessary arrangements. Ojo had already tried injecting himself with Genova souls, but that didn't work out as planned. Then he remembered the existence of Deep Ground, home to some of the most powerful beings on the planet, so he decided to use them to facilitate Vice's rebirth so that he could take over his body to act as a suitable host for Omega, all the while having his minions gather the uncontaminated to create a stream of refined Mako, thus awakening Omega without it being tainted by the influence of Genova. Sick of Hojo's maniacal musings, Vincent attacks him. But seeing as Hojo is now in possession of Vice's body, the otherwise frail scientist proves extraordinarily formidable as he dual wields a pair of sword revolvers, quickly overpowering Vincent. Vice then turns to absorb the life stream, but Vincent gets back up to stop him. As Vincent is defeated once more, Chaos breaks free, but is swiftly pushed back by Hojo's newfound power. As all hope seems lost, Lucrezia appears through Shelk and tells Vincent to take control of Chaos not allowing himself to be controlled by the monster within, for only then can he do what must be done. Heeding her words, Vincent calls upon Chaos again, but this time he retains his human form and self-control, allowing him to dodge Hojo's attacks. Going on the offensive, Vincent pushes Hojo back, causing Omega's power to fade, much to Hojo's surprise. Nero then reappears, revealing that as Hojo impaled him, he survived by entering Hojo at the moment of his supposed death. Hojo orders him to leave his body, telling him that Omega's host must be pure. But Nero demands Hojo's silence, since he is speaking with his brother, not him. With Hojo sidelined, Vice finally regains his senses and is reunited with Nero. The two of them fuse together breaking Hojo's control, and as they walk off to the center of the Mako chamber, they disappear into the Mako, becoming the catalyst for Omega's birth. The Mako in the area goes out of control, firing up all the reactors and sucking the life stream up into the sky, giving Omega form as a gargantuan beam which towers over the remains of Midgar. Trapped inside Omega as it manifests, Vincent breaks away using the power of chaos, finally coming face to face with his ultimate destiny. However, as Vincent tries to attack Omega, it becomes clear that Omega is protected by a powerful barrier which he cannot penetrate. In order to help Vincent, Shulk uses the stream of souls that exist inside Omega as a type of virtual network to enter the being. There she finds Lucrezia's soul who gives her the proto-materia, bestowing upon Vincent the power necessary to battle Omega. Shulk urges Vincent to connect with Lucrezia's heart, 
and as Lucrezia's reflection appears before him, created by her remaining data, he is able to grasp her true feelings of love for him, understanding how she tried her best to save him, and how she was driven mad by her sins and failures, leading to her tragic demise. After getting Shulk out of harm's way, Vincent engages Omega in battle, the full power of chaos now at his disposal. His friends Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Sid, Reeve, and Yuffie help clear him a path by shutting off the reactors that assist in fueling Omega. And Shulk says that the rest is up to him. Taking it upon himself to save the world, Vincent charges through Omega's barrier, entering the beast and attacking it from inside. There, he destroys Omega's remaining power sources, before facing off against Vice one last time, this time fully fused with Omega. However, as Vincent manages to destroy Vice, Omega begins to ascend, preparing for its trip among the stars. Vincent gives chase as Omega enters the upper atmosphere and stops it from reaching outer space with a suicidal plunge causing all of the accumulated livestream to disperse and return to the planet. Witnessing his act of heroism, the others behold the conclusion to the epic battle from the ground below. Afterwards, however, Vincent is nowhere to be found, his fate uncertain, but his redemption assured. After the dust settles, Shulk begins the process of getting her life back on track, filling the ten-year hole left by Deep Ground. At the Crystal Cave, Vincent, having survived, has returned to Lucrezia's side, this time telling her what is truly in his heart, letting her know that she was the reason he made it. A single tear running down her crystallized cheek. Outside the cave, Vincent is reunited with Shulk, who tells him that everyone is waiting, bright new day awaiting them, even as the remnants of Omega remain orbiting the planet as if frozen in the sky, the end having been averted. Thanks for watching the complete story of Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII. Does your brain hurt? Because mine sure does. That's part of the fun, I guess. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos like this one. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can even check us out on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, special thanks to all our wonderful patrons who help us do what we do. We really appreciate it. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, cacao!